Okay, so let's get started. Uh, good afternoon. What we are going to do today is we are going to look at um, lateral stability. Okay, because we looked at longitudinal stability. Can you hear me? Fine, okay. We looked at lateral stability and this week I'm going to start, uh, we looked at longitudinal stability. This week I'm going to start lateral stability. Okay. So, um, lateral stability of a fixed wing aircraft. And when I say uh, lateral stability, I mean static stability, right? Is it stable, unstable, that kind of thing. We looked at dynamic stability, but here we are looking really at the, uh, the static stability. Okay. Um, the first one we're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at yo stability. Yo stability. Okay. So that's that's kind of the first thing we're going to look at. It's also known as Weathercock stability. What we are trying to do in your stability with the aircraft is that we want the aircraft to naturally align with the infinity. Okay, that's kind of the goal. We want the airplane to naturally align with V infinity. Okay? It's a yo stability and it's known as Vettercock stability. Okay, I will talk about this in a minute. The idea is that the aircraft would naturally align itself with V infinity. What I mean is this let's say you have, we have an airplane. Okay? And let's say this airplane has a side slip and this is V infinity, okay? And this is my X body, which would really mean that, let me take these things out, okay, which means that this is my side slip. So what I want the aircraft to do is that it would naturally align itself with V infinity, okay? In other words, try to reduce beta to zero. It will try to reduce beta, the side slip, to zero. Okay? That's the goal. That's the goal. We are trying to zero. And how are we going, going to do this? The way we are doing this is we are going to do this with what we call the vertical tail. The vertical tail is here, is, is here in the back. And the vertical tail, vertical tail, um, or sometimes called the vertical fin, fin, allows to do that. Allows to do that. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. It, it will allow you to do that. So what do we need in order to happen, in order for this to happen? What we really need for this, we need a moment, you know, a moment that will take us to this point. So it will be a moment like this. I call this a delta n moment, right? It's a yawing moment, L, M, and N. So n is a delta yawing moment. So it would be a positive direction. Right? If I have a positive yaw moment, I would actually align myself with V infinity. So here's my question then. And, and here, when beta is equal to zero, I don't have the moment. If I have a positive beta, I have a positive delta n, that is great, then I will align my, myself with V infinity. If beta was equal to my, uh, would be a negative side slip, so V infinity would be coming from this direction, then delta n would be in the opposite direction. It would be a negative delta n, right? So here would be my question. For stability, for your stability, 
right? How would you like to have this? How would you like to see that? Or no, let me not put it this way. It's actually not correct. Um, it's, it's actually the opposite, of course. Delta Cn, delta beta, okay? So that would be equal to um, uh, Cn beta, right? The partial derivative. Would you expect this to be a positive number or a negative number for static stability? It should be positive, right? It should be positive for static stability. It's really good that we can make these, these comments now or uh, can, can, can see this. It's very easy. It has to be positive because for a positive beta, we want a positive n. Only then I will go towards v infinity and this is what I need for stability. Okay? So that's kind of what we are trying to do here. All right. So how is this e even possible? How is this happening? Now the way this is happening is actually quite simple. Let's say I have an airplane like that. Okay, and let's say at the back I have this vertical fin. And let's say this is my CG. Okay, I wonder if I can make this a little better. All right, and this is the CG. And let's say I have a, let's say I have V infinity from here. Let's plot the V infinity like that. Okay, let's say this is my V infinity. Now V infinity will go in all directions. It will all look like this. This would be my V infinity and this is the vertical fin at the back. Okay, so what's going to happen to this one? If you look at this, this will have a velocity that will look like this. Okay, and in fact, this one here would act like an angle of attack, right? This would be here like an angle of attack to, for, this, for this airfoil. And we call this alpha, uh, uh, let's say vertical tail. Okay, this is alpha vertical tail. So if let's say this here is the vertical fin, vertical tail, okay. And um, often, most of the time, uh, for a fixed wing air, air, uh, airplane, this is usually a symmetric airfoil. Okay, so if you have V infinity coming from here, so from the side this will look like that, right? I mean the airplane, it will look like this. This is the vertical fin, right? This one here is the vertical fin. Right? That's the vertical fin or the vertical tail. It is a symmetric airfoil and this is what it looks like. Now, if this vertical fin here has a V infinity coming from here and it is an angle of attack like that, which way would be the lift force or which way would be the drag and the lift? It would be like that, right? This way. Right? Because it will be like an angle of attack. So this would be here. This would be the lift force. Right? And here this way would be the drag, if you have a drag. Right? So you would have a force component that will kind of try to rotate you in this direction because of this L. Because of this lift L. Right? So it will try to rotate. So it would rotate itself and align itself v infinity, with v infinity. When v infinity is along the vertical fin, then the angle of attack is zero and you don't have a lift anymore, so you're exactly at that point, right? If you overshoot, you would go in the other direction, you would have a positive beta and it will rotate you in the opposite direction because you would have sort of an angle of attack coming from here. Does that make sense? This is kind of the principle of aligning yourself with V infinity and having this vertical tail. When you have this vertical tail, naturally if you don't touch the controls, the airplane will align itself with V infinity. So the airplane will always go, you know, straight or along V infinity. Because if you wouldn't have that, all right, 
Let me take out the vertical fin. I think I can take it out. If you don't have the vertical fin, there's no reason for you to go straight. I mean, you could actually be going like that. Okay? The reason you are turning yourself always towards the infinity is because of the vertical fin at the back. It's very similar to boats. You know, boats have fins too. Right? You know, the boats, they have fins. They just look this way. It's the same thing. It kind of allows you to rotate your nose towards the direction of your motion. Otherwise, there would be no reason for you to do this. And nobody wants to fly like that, right? So, so that's, that's that. Any questions so far? If you understand the principle, I'm going to start ri writing down um, equations now. Okay? So that's the principle. Okay, a few words. First of all, we are going to write um, this, this angle of attack, the angle of attack of the vertical tail. Okay, uh, the angle of attack of the vertical tail, if this is a positive angle of attack, let's call this one a positive angle of attack. So then it will, because the, the beta here, the angle of attack here is a negative number, as you see, I would say then it is minus beta plus a correction factor here. Okay, this is a little correction. The reason because I have this correction is because, you know, if this is beta, Basically, the side slip of the aircraft, and let's say this is the body x direction, okay? So therefore, this is your uh, side slip angle, and, and it is a negative number here, okay? This is not positive. This is a negative number here. So it is something like minus 10 degrees or something here. So minus, minus, alpha, it's going to be plus, right? So this is your angle of attack. All right, so you would think that this alpha and this beta are exactly the same. Well, it could be, but oftentimes it's not. The reason is because you have the fuselage, you have the wings, okay, and the airflow is not exactly parallel all the time. I mean, the airflow really takes turns. I mean, even if you had a straight airplane like this with no side slip, the airflow is, is kind of doing things like that. Okay? So it's kind of rotating around the body. So this is the effect of the wing and the fuselage and everything else. Wing, fuselage, etc. Okay? There might be other effects. For example, if you had a propeller here at the front, the propeller would make a, something like that. Right? So it will all affect the whole airplane. So this V infinity and this beta are not exactly the same. So we have some sort of a correction factor, let's think of it. Okay? Remember we had a, a downwash right, for the wing in, in the longitudinal direction for the vertical, for the horizontal tail. So it's kind of a similar thing, okay? All right. So what would be the lift over here? So we are trying to calculate this lift now, all right? So in a non-dimensional sense, the lift of the vertical tail would be equal to the lift curve slope minus beta plus this, okay? And this being the lift curve slope, okay? This is the lift curve slope. Lift curve slope. And because it's a symmetric airfoil, it will probably look like this. This is CL, this is alpha, and this is your AVT, basically your lift curve slope. Okay? All right. So now dimen uh, dimensionalize this. If you dimensionalize CL, the lift that the vertical tail will see will be CL VT times rho divided by 2 
velocity of the vertical tail that the vertical tail will see times the surface reference surface area of the vertical tail. And note that the vertical tail velocity is not necessarily exactly equal to V infinity. Okay? It might change a little bit. Right? I mean, ideally it should be the same, but it doesn't have to be. All right? So then let's calculate then the moment because of this lift. Right? I, I will try to calculate now this extra moment that happens because of this lift. In fact, let's call this delta nvt. So that will be a positive lift, a positive lift, if I call this a positive alpha, if this is a positive lift, then delta n, is it a negative or a positive? This is a negative or a positive a delta n? It's a negative one, right? So it will be negative cl vt times rho divided by 2 vt times svt times lvt. And lvt is that distance from the CG to the aerodynamic center of the vertical fin, and we call it lvt. Sorry, I messed it up over here. Looks now like a minus. Let me rewrite this. Okay. And this is the moment arm towards the CG. Okay. Okay, you might say, well, this L is not exactly perpendicular here, right? Because it has an angle here. And there's also the effect of the drag, right? Because the drag has also a component in, the, in two directions, right? One is in the back, but one is also to the side. So, and not the whole L is helping. So, you add this drag, you remove this lift, you assume beta is small, you know, you can safely say, um, uh, we ignore the effect of drag, okay? So it, is, it, it actually helps the, 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 the rotation. Uh, however, uh, we're going to make things simple here and we are going to ignore the effect of the drag, okay? All right, so now non-dimensionalize this. And we are going to non-dimensionalize this with the uh, typical thing that we always do with, with um, the, uh, let me write it down, using V infinity and uh, reference area, the wink reference area. And that will be equal to uh, minus CLVT, of course, times this thing, rho divided by 2, right, times VVT squared times SVT times LVT. And this is going to be non-dimensionalized CNVT is equal to, let's make it like that, is equal to 1 over 2 rho V infinity square, right? That's how we are going to times B because this is the yawing moment, remember? And B being the, what is B? The span, right? The span. Okay, so this is gone, this is gone. What do I have? CNVT. Any questions? Of course there is. Of course, sorry. Of course there's S. Okay? Just tell me. I, I, I might miss things. Okay? 
All right, so mine is equal to minus L, C L V T times S V T times L V T divided by S times B times V T square times V a vertical tail of course times V infinity square. And that's kind of your uh, important formulation here. Okay, so it is a non-dimensional moment, the non-dimensional yawing moment that is there because of that angle of attack we have over here with that alpha and everything else. Right? It's because of this CL, VT. We have a moment because we have a side slip, therefore we have a CL, and therefore we are generating this moment. Is that fine? Okay, so, and it's non-dimensional. And if you look at these numbers, this one here is basically that, right? It is the CL, the non-dimensional lift, because of this side slip and this, this correction factor. So it is kind of the, the lift that, that is generated. Here what you have is the velocity, the free stream velocity that the vertical tail will see, div the square of it, divided by V infinity square. So normally you would think that V infinity and the velocity that the vertical tail will see will be approximately equal, which means this is close to one, right? This is close to one, because V infinity and the velocity that the tail will see will approximately be similar. So it will be, this will be close to one, this is that. Now we have left with this thing, okay? Close to one, this is the lift, multiplied with something. And this is an important number in aircraft design, very similar to the horizontal tail. This is known as the vertical tail volume ratio. Okay? Just like when you design an airplane and you pick the horizontal tail volume ratio, you would also pick the vertical tail volume ratio when you design an aircraft. Okay? And if you look at what this ratio really is, and we, 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 we show it with V, V, okay? Vertical tail volume ratio. And what this really is, let me try to get up, what this really is, is again a comparison between how big your vertical tail is multiplied how big the moment arm is divided by how big your airplane is. This is the reference area of your wing or your airplane, whatever your reference area is. It de de defines usually how big your airplane is multiplied with the wingspan, how big your wingspan is. So you're kind of comparing the moment arm and the area of your tail with how big your airplane is. And this number for fixed wing airplanes is approximately, not, I, I don't want to say constant, but they're similar from airplane to airplane. All right? So if you're choosing an airplane, if you're if you designing an airplane, I'm sorry, if you design an airplane, you choose a vertical tail volume ratio, and usually you first calculate how big your wing must be, right, in order to keep that gross weight up in the air. And then you look at, how much um, span you want to put in. Once you have that, that multiplication must be constant because we know for a good airplane what this number approximately should be. Does that make sense? So let's say you have a given airplane, whatever that airplane is, either you have a big surface or you have a big moment arm. So what, you, what, what, what it will look like is, and you might be quite familiar when I plot this, you might have seen airplanes like that. If you have, okay, if you have a short airplane, you might have seen that you have a big vertical tail. Okay, short moment arm, big area. Or you might have a slender airplane like this then your vertical tail is rather small because you have a large moment arm. 
This looks kind of familiar, right? If you have this short airplane, the acrobatic airplane you might have seen are quite short, right? You have this really big vertical tail. And for these long ones, you have the small one. But you, let's say this is the area, this is area one and this is area two. I'm pretty sure compared with the wings, the tail volume ratios are approximately similar. Okay? Because the reason is, look at this now. Let's go back to the very beginning of the class, right? Now, how much moment do I need in order to, for this airplane to bring it back? If the vertical tail is too big, then you will, go, you will have a really big moment here, and the rotation will be very fast, which might probably overshoot, come back, and maybe result in oscillations. Right? If this delta n is too big, you might actually overshoot and then come back and all that. Or if, the, if this is too small, then this delta n would be small and you're really rotating very slowly, which might not be good enough. So if you want to have a good airplane, then the vo tail volume ratio is something that we already know what is good for airplanes. So you would choose a vertical tail volume ratio and this would be that. Okay? Any questions? All right, so CNVT then is simply equal to CLVT times the vertical tail volume ratio times velocity of the vertical tail divided by V infinity square. Okay, so this is that. All right, so what we really need now is I want to find Cn of the vertical tail divided by delta beta. And at the beginning we said this must be a positive number, right? For stability we said this must be a positive number. Now let's see what do we need to do in order to have it a positive number. So, okay, who's the function here of beta? It's really only this one, right? That's a function of beta. Delta del Cl Vt divided by del beta. Okay, times V, V, times V F, V infinity square. Okay, and we definitely want this to be a positive number in order to have a stable airplane. Now let's check if this is a positive number. Okay, first of all, this one here is definitely positive because it has a square. This is the tail volume ratio. Everything in the tail volume ratio is a positive number. So if you want this to be positive, I hope this one here is negative, and let's see if, it's, if that is actually the case. Okay? If that is actually the case. Is that a positive number or a negative number? The way we can look at this is we can look at our picture here again. So, for a negative beta, right, we have a positive L, and as the beta becomes more negative, this L will increase, the lift will increase. So it will be a negative number because of this, of this beta. And if you take the beta in the opposite direction, it would be a positive number. If it's a positive, the lift will be in the negative direction according to this sign convention, this would be in a negative direction, it would still be negative. Okay? You understand that? Negative beta, positive lift. Okay? Think of it like that. Negative beta, positive lift. So it will be negative. If you can remember, you might want to think of this. You're looking from the top, this is the Y body direction. Right? It's in this direction. So the lift is in the Y body direction. You might want to think of that like this. So is it positive lift? Yes. For a negative beta? Yes. Negative beta, positive lift, so it will make this one a negative number. So negative, and you have a negative over here. So the whole thing will be positive. You see, negative, negative, positive, positive, it will be a positive number. So yes, it will make it Positive. I mean, we kind of knew that from the beginning. I mean, it's, it makes a lot of sense from this picture. If you have V infinity over here, 
this will look like an angle of attack. You will have a lift, so you will have the moment that will just rotate this airplane towards beta. Okay? Kind of makes sense. But over here, we saw it from the equations as well. Okay? All right. Now, any questions so far? All right. So here's the other, here's the next piece of this, of course. You know, every airplane, or most airplanes, they have a vertical fin, but they also have something called a control surface over here. Okay? And we call this control surface the rudder. Okay? This is the rudder. So if you look from the top, it might look like this. Airfoil, symmetric. And you might actually have this extra piece that can go left and right, that could move from here to here. Okay? So instead of having this, you would have something like that. Okay? So you can rotate it. And if you rotate it this way, this one we will call a positive del R. Del R is now the pilot control. Okay? Del R is the rudder control. And it's controlled by the pilot. Okay? It's the rudder control. Sometimes it might so happen that the whole no, that doesn't really happen too much, but it could be so happening that the whole rudder, I mean the whole vertical fin, is like a rudder, so you could actually rotate the whole airfoil left and right. Okay? This would still be a del R. But this is typically the case you will see in airplanes with a rudder on the back, so it would go left and right. So if you have a positive delta R, uh, you would uh, generate extra lift, okay? So why would you need that? Okay, and this is what we call your control. Let's put it out, out here. Your control. And this is the rudder. So, why would you need your control? Why would you need a rudder? Well, first of all, we have established that if you have a vertical tail, the aircraft will always align itself with V infinity. Now there might be cases where you don't want to align yourself with V infinity. Okay? And that's when I need the rudder, for instance. Because without the rudder, I'm always pointing myself towards the V infinity. Is that something you always want? Well, there might be cases where you don't want it. Can you think of a case where you don't want to align yourself with V infinity? Landing. We talked about that, right? Landing. Let's say if you have a side velocity, right? If you have a side velocity and you're going forward, that means V infinity is really coming from this way, from this direction. So if you don't touch anything, if there's a side wind and you're going forward, if you don't touch anything, the, the airplane will align itself with V infinity. If you don't touch anything, it will do it automatically. So the airplane will start flying like that, remember? And you might think there's a, there's a V infinity, but there's none. In fact, we don't touch anything, we align ourselves with V infinity anyway. So you fly like that. Is that a side slip? No. Do you want to land? If you want to land, you, don't, you can't really land like this, right? Because of the landing gear. The landing gear is pointing this way, so you can't really, you don't want to do this. What do you want to do? Just before you land, you want to turn. How do you turn? You need the rudder. Because at this very moment, you have side slip now. Okay? At this very moment, you have side slip when you are landing. Let's say you have wind coming from the side, and you really don't want to align yourself with V infinity, but you want to turn and fly like that with a side slip. There you actually need to have the rudder input in order to align yourself with the runway and fly with side slip. Okay? So there might be cases where the airplane indeed wants to fly with a side slip. If you don't have the rudder control, the airplane cannot. 
the airplane will just align itself with V infinity because of that thing. Okay? So that's one thing. Well, you know, that's one good example. One good example is that we need to align ourselves. Uh, we need to fly with side slip. Fly with side slip. That's a good reason why we want to have this yaw control, the rudder. Another example, another reason we might need yaw control is the one engine out case. For an airplane with two, air, with two engines, let's say you have two engines here, okay, and you have thrust number one and you have thrust number two. And let's say, and this is the front, right, this is the horizontal. And let's say for, for whatever reason, one engine is gone. What happens then is that the airplane might be doing this. So what's going to happen? The airplane really wants to turn because of this T1, right? You have only one engine, so it wants to turn. So how do you counteract this, this moment? You need another moment that will counteract this thing. Well, a good way is to use the rudder here. The rudder control might actually allow you to counteract that torque that is coming from that T1, the moment. You understand? So you would actually, how would you, if you want to fly like that, if you want to fly like this with a V infinity, which way should be the, 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 the vertical tail? Like this or like that? It should be like this, right? Will it be like that? So I create a moment in this direction. Let me plot it a little bigger so we can all talk about this because it's a nice exercise to think about the sign conventions and all. Let's say I have an airplane like that. Let's say I have only one engine T1. And I would like to fly like this. This is V infinity and this is my CG. Okay? And obviously this T1 will generate a moment like that. So on the vertical tail side, I need to something that will generate a moment like that. Okay? I need to rotate like this, which means I will need a lift in this direction, lift of the vertical tail. In order to generate this lift like that, I would need something like, I'm exaggerating, something like that, isn't it? So that this will give you an angle of attack for the vertical tail so that it will create a lift like this and you will kind of rotate. Now, of course, I exaggerated, right? The real lift direction. No, this is the lift direction, yeah. So it will look like this. So the pilot would actually have one engine here and it would uh, give a, 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 a positive rudder input, right? And you could actually fly forwards in trim. If you don't have this, you wouldn't be able to do this, okay? Any questions? Okay. Another reason you know, this is, this is the second reason you have the yaw control. Okay. A third reason might be asymmetry on aircraft. You know the aircraft, if we always assume it's perfectly symmetric, but it might not be. Okay. So there might be something on one side of the wing that is causing you to give you a yaw moment. You know, assume that there's something, there's some roughness on this, on this wing and you constantly keep more drag on one wing and you keep rotating. The way to counteract this is really with the rudder. There's no other way. Or you can adjust the thrust levels. You can make one thrust larger than the other one. That's another thing, of course, you can do. But typically you would want to do this with the rudder. So there are cases where you don't want to align yourself with V infinity or you actually need a yawing moment. So the rudder will give you that. Is that good? Okay. So what time do we have? I don't have a watch right now. 35. 35. Okay, let's give a 10 minutes break and I'll continue, okay? <laughs>